Welcome to a special holiday edition of Universally Speaking with Raheem Islam on 860 AM WNOV, The Voice. I am your co-host, Tosha Davis, and we are here live and in living color in the studio today. Today is December 25th, 2014. It's 3 o'clock p.m. Don't adjust your dials. You're not confused. It's not Friday. It is actually Thursday. (laughs) You didn't sleep through the holiday. (laughs) It's Christmas. And we are on the radio live. Uh, The movement does not stop for the holidays. As a matter of fact, sometimes we need to double up. So we are here. We doubling up. We doubling up. <laughs> Happy holidays, holidays Raheem. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. You're doing good? I'm feeling good. I just left. Uh, is it New, is it new Birth? Greater New Birth. Greater New Birth. It was so, so uh, the spirit there was so moving. Uh, it really touched me. So Yeah, they were feeding, uh, they did Christmas dinner for the community. For church members and community, anyone who wants to eat is free. There are a lot of places that are actually feeding people today for Christmas. Yeah. What, what I was really intrigued, well, first of all, I was looking into the, you know. into the eyes, into the souls of the people. And I tried to study the people, and I was just looking, just, and I seen a lot. I seen a lot of pain. Mm. You know, even though this is a, a great thing that the, the bishop is doing and the church is doing, and everybody's trying to do, trying to help. Um, but I seen a lot of pain in the eyes of the people. Right. You know, I see, I seen suffering, and um, it really, it really touched me. So. Right. Hey, are those new glasses? I like those. No, I just pull them out. Oh, you just pull yeah, them out yeah. to mix it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, mix them <laughs> up. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, I'm, wait a minute. I, first of all, I'm getting all deep and everything. You're gonna talk, <laughs> talk about my glasses. I just turned around and saw them. I, I know. Like, oh, I know. I'm trying. I'm, get try, deep I'm, try, I'm trying to. Get, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. You know, I'm trying to understand. As, as Marvin Gaye said, "What's going, going on? on?" You know, I was thinking that because we had people that were coming in. We anyone could come in. It's free. Um, earlier today, we were one of the sponsors for the uh, Christmas family feast. Uh, Courier Communications, WNOV, also a sponsor that's put on by the Salvation Army. Uh, down so we, Universal, 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 Universal Companies. I am apologize. Sorry, okay. I'm just so uncomfortable. Come on, come on. Let's get, let's Universal, get Universal companies. companies out there. Come Universal on. Universal Companies. Holla, holla. holla. Uh, it was one of the sponsors this year. Second year, actually. Uh, Universal Companies is one of the sponsors. We're going to sponsor more. Yes. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get in this community in a big way, but go ahead. And go ahead. we also sponsored uh, attorney and Senator Lena Taylor's uh, mobile food pantry uh, that she did for Christmas. Uh, hers was, I believe, on the 22nd. Uh, we wanted to actually have it at one of our venues, but we're going to see if we can do something in the spring. So we want to say thank you to Senator Taylor for the two mobile pantries that she did. We're going to ask you guys, if you're listening, join in on a conversation, 414-444-5250. So these different feeding locations, you know, you think about people come in and for Christmas I'm sure they would like to be at home with their families, but I'm sure the people that are there eating and also the people that are there serving are both there for different reasons. The people that are there eating are there because they're they're out of need or mm-hmm. necessity. And the people that are there serving are there because they're there for the true meaning of what this time of year and the holiday is really about. Well, I, I talked to, uh, I listened to several people discuss um, the difference between a holiday and a holy day. And um, there's a big difference. Um, for too many, I think that this time has become a holiday and not a holy day. And so the there has to be more focus on why are so many people in need in the land of plenty. You know, we have we have we probably consume you know probably a, 
a fraction of the world's population of over 7 billion people. We're 315 million. If you do the math, I don't even know what that is, but it's a small fraction of the world's people. But we control America, probably control more than 40 or 50 percent of the world's resources. So America is the is the land of plenty. So the question is, well, why are people and specifically our people doing as bad as they're doing? And so, um, you know, I, I think you have to ask that question if you want to really serve those people. Right. What's or, really going on? Right, right. If you don't ask that question, you just you get into this this uh, prescripted way that really never empowers the people. Right. So yeah, okay, you feed the people, and but the parable says you feed a person f- for a day, they eat for a day. You teach them. You how teach to them how to. How to feed themselves they eat for eat they eat forever so the 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 message and and the message to the church to the religious organizations to everybody who is out there trying to help the people you have to understand why or at least begin to unpack these reasons so you can get a better idea to come up with real solutions instead of your solutions you know, um, I was reading um, this book the other day, and this book talked about, it was talking about Christianity. And by the way, I, I, I mentioned some things in, 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 in part two of my uh, article on Christianity, and I talked about Christianity being, it's benefited white people more than it's benefited black people. So people might say, well, Raheem, you're a Muslim, and so that's why you're coming with that anti-Christianity. Well, I'll say... Christianity has benefited white people, and Islam has benefited Arabs. Okay, so now, so, so now. right, so now right. <laughs> so I don't I don't condone or promote one over the other, except that I'm looking at the facts. Okay, the facts, and I see when when one religion tells you to admire and uphold and to promote. And glorify another group over to you, then something something's wrong with that, right? And and Christianity is is predominantly white, uh, you know, people, and, I, and I'm sure it's black people in Christianity too. But the thousands of years, or at least the two thousand years of Christianity, has been a promotion of white people. Mm-hmm. So even if black people are involved, there's still this image of white people. And for 1,400 years in Islam, they teach all you got to do is you know, romanticizing about the Arabs. Right. Uh, 1,400 years ago, Prophet Muhammad or Jesus or the image of Jesus, the image of Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad. the image of the disciples, the image of the companions. Well, where is us? They don't look like us. No, no. Well, where, where is us? And isn't it amazing because historically, if you look, the region that all those people came from were where well, but that's a whole nother argument. Well, I mean, it's no question, but <laughs> but because some down we're down the line, we have allowed fiction into our spirituality. Now the fiction is untouchable. You can't even touch it. You can't even have a conversation about facts because now you enter into a space of yeah, you can't Man, touch you it. Can't you can't. Touch you can't. Whoa, 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 whoa! Time out. You don't bring your facts <laughs> over here. No, 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 no. But I see. Well, tell me how has religion, any of these religions, helped the black man when you still see this kind of poverty? And when I look into the eyes of the souls of the people that I saw today, I saw pain. Right. I saw serious pain, and I am not joking. I am not sitting up here acting like I didn't see this. Right, they're hurting. People are hurting. It's no question they're hurting. And I, what I saw also today, I seen hurt different ways. It, it exhibit itself different places. But what I seen hurt today, I seen hurt in mothers and fathers who aren't able to take care of their families. families. Feed the so families. that that's a different that's a different type of hurt. To me, 
that ain't that ain't that ain't, that ain't the same hurt that I see where you see a you know somebody just destroying their body or you see uh young people who are just walking around with their pants all the way down showing their butt they can't even walk across the street because you know they can't walk right physically can't even walk like that or you see you know women who are selling their bodies you know they hurt you see or you see this overabundance of the use of alcohol and drugs they're hurt that's a different type of hurt than the hurt that i saw today right i saw families that are in struggling Right. I seen mothers trying to be mothers to their to their children, trying to keep their families together. I interpreted all this and through just looking into their eyes. Right. I seen fathers who are trying to still be fathers to their children, but yet they're in a, they're in a place where they're trying to get a, a get a, a decent meal. Come on, I mean, if these great people that we talk about, whether it's Jesus or whether it's Moses or whether whomever we romanticize about. The question that has to be asked, you know, what's going on? What the hell is going on? So, I mean, I got some ideas. And um but part of the part of the discussion and the narrative, um, it's a long process. I mean, we're doing something in Philadelphia uh, on January nineteenth for the celebration of Martin Luther King. And we're going to take back the narrative that they've made him into some kind of almost like a the the tiger, the lion that this man was. They they they've put him down to like a little kitten. I think they've. Uh, I don't. Even, I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, but it's when you defang. They. I think they've taken his. Exactly. They've You're him. right. They've whitewashed oh, you mean when him. They, when they uh, when you take a cat or something you go get the, the yeah, declaw declawed him right they've whitewashed him right um now so that i've heard uh several different times and through some educators that when youth are um doing you know who their heroes are and portraits and different things that several different young people have painted portraits of martin luther king as uh not being black because they don't have any historical images of him as being a black man because he's been whitewashed to just be this cleanse right yeah. right and uh, and then the other thing is that the um even the holiday kind of is a distraction because uh so we 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 got to take the narrative back and this all is fundamentally part of uh, what's going on and what's going on is not good is really not good but the question is that for those who are um, you know involved in the day to day trying to address the issues that have impact our people the question is that you have to look into the mirror and you got to ask yourself you know what's really going on What's really going on, and how am I, how am I actually uh, influencing? How am I making a difference? You know, I really cringe, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't celebrated Christmas in forty years, so the whole thing about Christmas to me has been has, is pretty much out of my system. System, but I really, really enjoy this time of year. When there's the attention is around those who are less fortunate. fortunate. Um, but I say that 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 is that is that is to me hypocritical. If you're if you're not concerned about those who are less fortunate throughout the year. What do we do the other three hundred? Yeah, I mean, I mean, come on. How do we bottle this? How do we package this? How do we put this in and, and contain this energy and this spirit? So again, that. We are not feeding people for the day. We're giving them the tools for them to feed, feed themselves, themselves for tomorrow. And to me, that is the biggest, biggest, biggest thing that we could do. Um, but that ain't going to happen because we're good people. That ain't going to happen because we're nice people. That's going to happen because we know what we're doing. 
And it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, definitely not. But you got to start somewhere. Um, I've been writing uh, for, oh, six or seven weeks on the black male, a target group. I'd like to have some more discussions about that today. Okay. Um, we, 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 we've, re we've read a little bit about it um, on the air, on the show, and we, we shared some again last week. But I think, <laughs> personally, I think you just took a reprieve and changed up a little bit because I really don't think you finished. Oh no, I I had to finish it. Just <laughs> I had to just. Uh, I think you just had to step away from it. Yeah, for a because and, and come back. you know what you know the funny thing is that I actually started the conversation, and trust me, none of these things are prescripted. They're really um, things that I see and feel, and and then I just go right, you right. know. Um, um, and the thing that 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 um, prompted this discussion, this 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 series that I couldn't get out of, <laughs> was when I go into the prisons and I see the closest thing that I can can equate to that visual is slavery. Mm is to see, you You will never see this many black young minds and souls and people caged. Mm. Inventory, like a, like warehoused, locked up. That's what started this conversation for oh, me. Okay. So when I looked and I said to myself, here are the black men. This is where they are. If people ask, where well, are where, the men? This is. So how is it that a society is similar to in, in the uh, Nazi? How you can extract a whole group of people out and the world still operates without, and without, functions. Without this. Well, they, they don't. nobody's calling any attention. Nobody's singing. Nobody's saying anything. So, so the reality is that you have all these black men in prison representing nearly 51% of the prison population. Uh, excuse me, 51%. It's more like 70% of the prison population of, 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 or us. But it's, it's, it's nearly 50% of our male population between the ages of 18 and 35. So nearly half of our black men in that area, in that sweet spot, mm -hmm. are warehoused in somewhere and no one has said anything. So one of the things that we are doing in Pennsylvania, we're asking the new governor to say, do not build any more jails. Put a moratorium on building any more prisons. That's the first thing. They warehouses. So that's what started me in this conversation. Okay. So I know we want to take a break, but I, w I wanted to get us back to... Why? Why? Why do we see such inequities? Why do we see so much poverty? Why do we see in our group of people? And this didn't just happen today, December 25th, 2014. This has been going on for some time. And until you understand the connection, you're never going to understand what you're dealing with. Because you're not fixing the problems of day. You're fixing the problems of, of our, historical, our, our historical perspective, our historical context, our, histo our history here in this country. You're not fixing today's problem. You're fixing a problem that's been with America since we got here and we've been here. That's what you're fixing. At least what you, you, should, you should be a part of your thinking. Well, we got to know what it is we need exactly. to Exactly. You don't even know. You sit up here want to you know, feed people, but you don't even know why you're feeding them. And what it is that they're sick from. So we're going to discuss this a little bit more. We're going to talk about the black male, the targeted group. We're going to talk a little bit about also uh, this week's uh, article on Universally Speaking. You are listening to a special edition of Universally Speaking with Raheem Islam on 860 AM. We are going to take a break and we'll be right back. 
Welcome back to a special edition of Universally Speaking with Raheem Islam on 860 AM WNOV, The Voice. I am your co-host, Tosha Davis. Raheem Islam is here in the studio with us. Hey, Raheem. Hello, hello. And we also have a guest joining us today, Mr. Tori Lowe. God bless you. Have a happy holidays, everybody. Uh, Good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And we always have our sidekick who just rolls with us. Rain, shine, cold, snow, sleet, everything. He better than the post office. Tony Cash. Yeah, Tony's there. <laughs> Tony is always with us. So, in fact, we, we do... Um, uh, one of the things that I... One of the reasons why... Um, I document a lot of things is because I really been listening to Kenny Gamble and if you been looking at any of the things about music um, in fact I just saw a big uh, uh, piece on uh, Soul Train mm -hmm. and Soul Train theme song Kenny Gamble Gamble how wrote this theme song but their their acts were prominent on Soul Train so when you look at and I and I met Don Cornelius on a number of occasions, and Don Cornelius had a hard time being able to uh, take that footage and and monetize it. Okay. And the reason why is because during that period of time, he didn't get the releases oh, he from needed the acts. from the acts that he needed. So, in order for him to be able to get the releases at the time near his death, it was massive. Wow. So nobody would touch it. No one would air it as a, uh, a as a monetary thing. So it would have to become almost gifted. So he was going to gift gift his entire catalog to the National Center for Rhythm and Blues, an organization we was actually pushing. So the point I'm making though is that that place, American Bandstand, maybe um, there's maybe a couple other music programs that where R and B acts were there. Soul Train, there's none bigger than Soul Train right, because it, it, uh, went uh, there. Well, well, it it really was a showcase for R and B. But Kenny didn't film the making of um, this great music. I mean, there are pictures here and there, but not purposely filming. Because right, you don't think about it when you right, in the process. right. He so don't film. So, doing it. You're so, just so, it so, so one of the reasons why Tony's here and why I'm always getting pictures and films of everything right. I'm doing is because I'm following. I'm trying to not do what Kenny Gamble right. did. You're learning from, from him, right? And right. he instructed us. So now my problem is, you know, what do with all this footage? <laughs> right. Now we got all this stuff. <laughs> what we do with it? So right. People so to, always wonder so why to, somebody yeah, following yeah, you around. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I I have a. Um, Ever, ever anybody seen Blazing Saddles? <laughs> Since, but he had a theme song. He has a. Every uh, time he, <laughs> no, he actually had an orchestra <laughs> following him, him, right? So I have a, 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 a crew of people sometimes following me into my meetings, and people are like, "Well, what the hell is going on? Why are you? <laughs> what? What? Who is this? What do you need to take pictures of, or videos, and anything that we're speaking and 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 we try to document? Yes, it. definitely. Because. It's really, really important to be able to tell the story, the making of. I think we're doing something very, very great. We're on the verge of doing something very great. And someone later is going to be able to look at what we're doing and figure out how we did it. Right, because you think about it nowadays, how we go back and we Google, we go to look, we want to hear a speech by Martin Luther King or a speech by Malcolm X. Somebody... To, took, took it, took it, took right. That, right? Somebody, right. somebody took that footage right. back then. Somebody thought enough to, you know what? We need to capture this. This is important enough to capture. So, so I, somebody gonna be like, Google that Raheem yeah, Islam. Yeah, uh, well, that he did. I don't, I don't, I don't know about <laughs> that, but the, but here's what I do know: is I'm not gonna leave it for chance. <laughs> and Tony, and, look, Tony gonna have it all. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tony, Tony gonna have, have it. He gonna have goo gogs of. of <laughs> A tape <laughs> and and footage. Uh, Tony go have it and, all. and and so but the, but the real point that I, I just wanted to make sure that the audience understood is that you know this is uh, not for monetizing anything. Mm -mm, it's our history. This is how we're going to tell the story, right. 
and we got to be able to tell a story in the in the medium and in the in the way that the that the world wants to see it and the world wants to see um, part of our problem um, and challenge is that we're living in absolute unbelievable ignorance um, we have been dumbed down to the point where our information is based on a you know 30 second clip right you know i i hear like i hear my daughter say well um daddy i can't do something well, why you can't do that well somebody said who's right who, or they who said, said they, they, who's, who's they that's my no favorite. what what are you talking about go straight to the source get the facts then you can come to me and talk we can talk about strategy right but Who's but but saying? we have allowed that is the the way we do live our lives and we got a, adults polished adults who are emotionally driven by something somebody said right that never ever gets a chance for scrutiny for examination and similar as we talked when we start this program about how if it's contained in religion Right, it's can't completely touch it. no, you I'm can't touch it. Off, off now, why why can't you touch it? Why can't you question? Who it? who tell me one man that you know that you know in your life that's not questionable? Tell me a human being that you can think of that you know, not somebody you somebody told you about in your life. Tell me a person who is not beyond question. Exactly. Well, that's the state of human beings. So if there's none in your circle, which there are none, there are none in mine, everybody's questionable, that means that's the same situation that goes on for all of humanity. Exactly. So then why is anything not discussion? You can't discuss it. So nothing should be off limits. Nothing. All right? But we fed and we're moving by in this environment of... We we move by thirty second clips to the point where again no one knows the facts, and they don't take the time to go find out. Are what you the kidding facts me? Are. You know nobody it was in the paper. Yeah, or, or, it was on or the or news. Somebody, somebody said something. <laughs> are you kidding me? Well, 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 our people are are visually stimulated, and that's why Fox News is able to garner a hundred thousand, three hundred thousand of our people to watch that news station because. It, it's about drama. They they try to emphasize the drama, and we we don't know that we're being brainwashed uh, at the same time through propaganda campaigns. Uh, we we are big. We are heavily uh, just flooded with propaganda campaigns about our own people. Uh, blacks will argue against each other, uh, and not knowing that we we're arguing ideas that ain't even ours. Uh, even with Christmas, even with the ideas of religion, even with the ideas of how to just operate or uh, take a child to school. We'll, we'll, we don't we're not on one accord. But uh, when I went and talked to the Hmong community, um, you talk to two of their top leaders and everybody do. They, they talk to them and you can't even talk to them. They won't even respond a certain way unless you talk to the leadership and then they all do the same thing. So they have leadership. They have good leadership. So. I like this because this goes back to your question that you always ask, Raheem. How I many? I have so many questions. Well, Which one? Who's our black leader? Oh, he's, who's leading the Oh, yeah. Well, uh, we definitely don't have two. <laughs> 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 That's why I thought it was very interesting when he said, you know, they won't even talk. They say, you know, you're going to talk but, to our leaders. But, but, but uh, I, I'm writing a piece now called The Black Culture, right? And before I could talk about the black culture, all right. I don't think you've seen this yet, Tosha. I, don't, I, don't, I saw the, just the, the Black Culture was the one that you did this week. Oh, it is? Yeah. That's the one that's running now? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, well, where is it at? It's not, I don't have, a, you have a picture have of a, it? You have a, uh, I have a the copy paper? of it. Well, anyway, I see, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> well, anyway, I thought it was something. No, so you, you got that already? Yes. Interesting. All right. Well, anyway. Carry on. Let me not lose my thought. Right, right, I was right, trying right. to follow up what you She's said, saying, right, right, right. right? About the monk. Well, well, well you know, just, know, just I, other no, communities in general. But that. No, that but I wanted. I wanted to. Uh, uh, That's one address well one thing you said in your your statement. So I'm writing. Well, it's in the in the article today is a, um, in the papers today is the article about the black culture. 
But I have to make the distinction between the black culture and the morphed black culture, the assimilated black culture. And you, you, you reference a couple of the, the characteristics of that assimilation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to conclude. <laughs> and I'm not going to be no seven, eight parts on this. Oh, okay. No, All no. Right. But I'm going to conclude that the black culture is being about being black. All right. So if it's not being about being black, then somewhere along the line, we've diluted the black culture. But that's my ultimate landing place. Okay. All right. With the black culture. And when we're being about being black and you look at the black culture it's about greatness, it's about achievement and it's about excellence. That's what it's about. That's all it's about. But. The point I was referring to you was the one to specifically talk to you about when you said we're a visual community. Well, we're not a visual. We're more hands-on. But when we've morphed into Americanism mm-hmm. and American go, so go America, so go the black community mm-hmm. because we've now morphed our culture into tied it to an American culture. That serves American, predominantly white Christians. That's what it serves. Now, that takes a lot of explaining to do, and I'll I'll explain it some other time. But I'm not apologizing for it. All right, let's look at the facts. The facts is they live in paradise. We live in hell. That's it. All right, so guess what? That's what That's what the facts are. So... But the point I wanted to make as rela- relates to what your statement was, was, again, when America catches a cold, and this is, to me, uh, uh, a not a good characteristic when you say we are visual people, you know, versus uh, more content, more uh, hands-on, more practical people. And that's the really the state of America, all right? Because the ignorance is not tied to black people. It's tied to an entire country where we don't... We're living off of sound bites. We don't check, fact check anything. We don't know the facts. We're doing things today that has become so historical that we don't even know where they came from. We don't even know their origins. And why are we doing them. And why are we doing them. Have no idea. And if we thought about it for a moment, if we even found the truth of why we do it, we wouldn't even believe it. We wouldn't even believe it. So the point I wanted to make is that we have to, when America catches a cold, the black man catches triple pneumonia. So America is a visual community, and we are triply a visual community. But we have to win in that environment. And that means we have to figure out a way how to package and how to get and turn on a people's mind to think past what's being presented. Right. I, a lot of times, and, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm only talking for my generation what I see. How old are you? you? Know, I'm 38. Okay. Uh, you know, and I and I'm I deal with my people head on. I don't I take a direct approach, and, and that's what is needed. I always say our community needs a direct approach, a hands-on approach, and an approach that shows that you're active, an active approach. And 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 that is right. I, a lot of the older bishops that I knew, they're very active in the community, even though they were in the church structure, they were out in the community. Right. Uh, so when I get as today in 2014 i don't see that activeness amongst our people i don't see nobody uh talking to the young men they're afraid of these young men i mean i don't see it's no jobs in our community so they say stop the violence but a jobless community will only produce violence they they, it's like they set us up in this box and say you can't do that and i heard i think the the brother say uh, uh if if he was talking about his families out here that can't even take care of their family right. and they trying to take care of their family i'm starting to see men uh, they want to take care of their family but but they don't have a way to take care of their, their family. family so it's like now they have put us in a box where they're saying you should be doing this 
but there's no means. That call, that's the old <laughs> gotcha. Right. <laughs> See there, gotcha. Right. right. And we're falling See, for right, this. Right, right. Oh, we, no. we, we're, talk, we're, call, we're calling these men deadbeat fathers when really they it's no it's not even no jobs on the north. It's not even no jobs. It, it, you can't call a man that wants to take care of his family a deadbeat if he can't even get a place to work. Right. And I, I think that um, we fall for I, this. I, I, I'm, I sometimes on meetings, brother, and let me tell you something. I. I, I, I hear you 1,000%, and um, <laughs> I will spend the rest of my life trying to address those issues uh, and getting others to address those issues. I have not seen that deadbeat situation. What I've seen is um, young men who don't know how to handle male-female relationships mm -hmm. um, and is very, can be very hostile. Um, and that's a hostile situation. It could be very, very damaging. Um, and um, and also, I also see men who are in a predicament. You're just facing. They just don't. They want to, but they they don't don't know how. Because, and I went into a, a, a meeting one day, and it was uh, oh these these are very wealthy people sitting at the table, white people, and predominantly men. And I was meeting with them at the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the meeting, and I said to them, and I and I, I don't know if I have impacted them or not, but I tried to. I says, imagine that you could not provide for your family. What would you do? What would you do if you could not provide for your family? In fact, what would you do if you couldn't provide for your family at the level you're providing for your family? I says, so that's where you got to begin at. And so, and that's why I was talking earlier about, you know, you know, feeding people, you know, you know, it has to be um, very, very uh, a tough situation for a man um, that wants to provide is unable to. Yeah, I heard that statement. That was the statement I was trying to say. And when I was younger, we ate at the soup kitchens, uh, St. Francis, St. Gall. Uh, we we did that every day after school, and uh, we shopped at Purple Heart. You know what I mean at the at the Goodwills because that that's we grew up in poverty. And as I got older, and I and and, and as I grew to understand that you know the more knowledge, the more know you know better, the more you do better. But at that time when you're growing up, when you're growing up. You you don't understand the issues of poverty or white what the what the what the European ideology is or you don't understand all those things. You're just trying to live. But when I get older and and, and I realize that we we have taken on this education, uh, this this type of uh, European education, and we in our communities are surrounded by these social systems, uh, these these training systems. Uh, a lot of people are getting trained with no end result of no job. Uh, this is on this is going on in Milwaukee. When I was living in Minnesota, they have four or five companies that can give a man. 13 to 15 to 20 dollars an hour that he can take care of his family so here i come back to milwaukee three years ago and i don't see these things on the north side i don't see where our community has a uh, of uh, 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 economic development we, and we're still focusing on economic development in in the three years that i've been back home and i and i'm just wondering you know how do we start implementing these economic uh things because really if we can provide some type of economic development on the north side we can we can start that issue about that or start that conversation about ending the violence or ending the the, the things that's really wrong with our community because they're connected to uh the the economic structure well, I think the um, you're making a, an excellent point, um, and that point basically these are all distractions, and I've been writing and talking and fighting uh, most of my adult life, and every year, I mean, I'm learning more and more how how in t you know connected these things are, and it's almost like to me it's like you um, if somebody tells you to go. You know, run over here. You run over here. Then they say, run over here. You spend your life running in distractions from the real issue has always been the issue and will always be the issue is economics. And um, one of the one of the, one of our great economists, Dr. Claude Anderson, who um, wrote the book Powernomics, and he talks about um, 
talks about a bunch of things in that kind of uh, dilutes our ability, uh, which is basically you know what we do to each other and what, this mind that we've we've now inherited um, that prevents us from being as a collective. But he points to our economic, our aggregate economic p- position in 1863 uh, in the emancipation of us transformed from being enslaved to be free and yet our economic position is the same today um, and so what we're fighting uh, we're fighting um, we're fighting multiple uh, things we're fighting but they're all symptoms to the real issue and the real issue is the economic one and the challenge for us today is that we've lost ground over the last 60 years um, because we've given up our base. Um, those who had, um, um, you know, for the last 60 years, every community in America, black community in America, talks about romanticizing how it was pre-segregation um, when we had black banks. We had black insurance companies. Right. We had black retailers. We had black funeral homes. We had black commercial districts. We had this. We had that. We had that. What happened was we integrated. Um, and assimilated. So, and we assimilated. And we integrated our money. Uh, and that's what people don't do. And that's what groups, I don't care who they are and what they are. That's the, and, they, and there's a term for uh, the integration of money. It's called the... Um, how many times does a dollar circulate before it leaves your community? It's really called money integration or money segregation. So segregation is great, especially when you start talking about money. You want to segregate your money. But our issue has always, be, has always been, I mean, we've got some other issues to deal with, but we'll always be in a capitalist society. It'll be about capital and our ability to... to uh, gain capital to leverage capital to grow capital to have capital to have wealth um that's our going to always be our issue so these are all just distractions um when my grandfather came here and my grandmother they came from mississippi when they came here they came from picking cotton when they came to milwaukee milwaukee had factories they had jobs uh, it was it was one of the best cities for uh, welfare or, or and work, and people came here to to work and to, to 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 get ahead, and and this generation, the generation I see now, they don't even have that. They don't even have uh, factories to go to. They don't have uh, somewhere they can say, okay, let me get myself together. Let me go over here and get some money. Uh, the first entrepreneurial opportunity for African American is selling drugs, in this day and age. That's like the first idea when I talk to young men. I'm like, how are you going to get money? I'm a hustle. Well, well what, you, what do you mean hustle? What's that? You know, hustling ain't a bad thing if it's, you know, in the right direction. But right. but but when you say, you know, I'm going to go, you know. It means it really means for for that. It means basically to sell drugs. Right. That's or, what it's go work for. So I say, you know, how do we in this time? Well, you can't go and get a job and work for 20 years and get some type of retirement. How do we develop that economic structure when we, we can't even get uh, the, the necessary means? Now, it seems like they have stripped the job opportunities for the African-American male. Then they put these statistics out there saying it's 66 percent unemployment or something like that. But it ain't they don't say it is no jobs. Right. They just say it's, it's high unemployment. They give you these negative statistics, but they're not telling the truth about why it's like that. It's well, nothing here. And they're not. They never will. I mean, um, I, I talk about, you know, one of my great leaders is Malcolm X. And he says the the oppressed the oppressor will never feel the pain of the oppressed. The oppressor will never tell the story of the oppressed. It's just impossible. They're just not. And the, every this is also um, um, a game on a game or on a high level be, being played about resources. So um, one of the things that I'm writing today, and I, you don't have that. I pulled it up. No, no, you don't have this. Oh, one. I don't have this. No, one. Oh, no, because you just wrote it today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> you like, how did she get that on my head? <laughs> is that we're, we've lost the battle in public opinion. All right. So in the public opinion, these kind of issues, we had traction with some of these issues. There was clearly a sense of unfairness that hand had been dealt to the black community. There was clearly a sense of, of not only civil rights, but equal rights that was pretty much understood by even people who didn't want to even want to accept it. They didn't want to accept it. But the reality is, in the public opinion, these kind of ideas were prevalent. Today, they're not even prevalent. There's no counter to what you just finished saying. So the, 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 the general idea is that black men are lazy. Black men don't want to take care of their children. Black, ch black men are, are, are deadbeat fathers. Black men are criminals. Black men have a, a higher propensity to want to kill each other and on and on and on. So the context of that kind of discussion is not, there's no counter to it. So you get about 5, 10, 15, 20 years of this nonsense, given what we were talking about earlier about our inability to fact check anything, right, given us we're a visual community, now you say now it's gospel. And it's been blanket over a whole group of people. So the only way to challenge that, in my humble opinion, those people got to challenge it. Mm -hmm. So, So you... We talked earlier about your independence. Well, your independence is going to have to be aligned with other independents. Right. Because we got to create a voice. We have to create a voice. And the first group that we got to convince is us. That's true. I, I, I protest because I believe in the protest. A lot of, I had some people come to me and say, why are y'all marching? I said, how do you think you got the space you have now? You, how do you think you have the space you have now? Because people marched, but lawyers did their job, and then people passed policy. See, it's not about marching; it's about bringing the awareness to, for them to be con, to, for them to confront this awareness and then pass the policy. That's the concept we talked about earlier about public opinion. So yes, mm. but these I, are our people well, saying it. Well, this is not no other culture. No, but no, <laughs> I'm saying the public opinion when <laughs> right. we lost the argument is <laughs> right. not only just in the white community; it's in our community yeah, as our, well. You can get on Facebook right. and see a ton of our people arguing ridiculously about n and not having en enough knowledge to understand what's really truly happening right. here. And, and this is what this is one thing I, I really want to make a point to say is that. The gays got marriage from using our tactics. The the Denver, the weed people got weed from using our tactics. Everybody is getting liberated off of our right. methods. But when we when we use our methods, our people attack us to get our needs met when we use our methods. But I tell you why I think that we have a disconnect. And I just love I just love to see the young people protesting. I love this. I just, just love it. It is the American way. It is the way that birthed this country. It is the spirit that will continue to keep this country great. Um, the difference is, the, the problem is, that protest, I liken it to a football team. So you got an offensive line. You got tackles. You got wide receivers. You got tight ends. You got quarterbacks. You got running backs. You can't have, um, let's say that that marching is like a tackle, two tackles. So the marching creates some opportunity. Where's our running back? Where's our playbook? So the difference in those those movements you just talked about, the weed and the and and, and the gay and lesbian community, they had a playbook. Mm -hmm. So they had an offensive line. They had a defensive line. They had a special teams. Mm -hmm. They were organized. Right. And so it's one thing to go out here and go out here and protest and fight. And trust me, I love it. I just, we got to we got to bring that group in and we got to have discussions. And so everybody's not going to go. And by the way, everybody never got on the, on the front line mm -hmm. where the whole people benefited from it. But guess what? The, there, there are certain circumstances on that front line you have to be able to cover and protect. But that is also a part of a whole team concept that we have not had to be able to, to maximize and optimize.
the brothers who are doing this because there's a there's a movement taking place in this country and you got to be a, almost a nut not to see it mm -hmm. there is a movement of, of, of dissatisfaction now there was one movement just took place with the just died out but the whole um disprop um disproportion of wealth the wealth dis disparities with the um Wall Street or the um, oh, uh, Occupy, Wall Occupy, Occupy Street. Wall Street or the the one percenters. It was an unbelievable movement. Now that kind of went away, but there's another movement now taking place. But I believe these are some of the same people from yeah. Occupy Wall Street that, that are also taking part of well, this. Well, they might be, but maybe they're just professional movement people. But clearly, there is a movement taking place in America right now that that America is watching. And, and again, and I say that in order for this to be successful, we have to organize and we have to work together. So we have legislators working, we have grass people working, civic working, we have the media working, we have it all working orchestrated because when you go out here and put your life on the line, it should not be just for nothing. To me... Um I, I, I know people don't want to hear this because I, I, I take a direct approach to dealing with things. And for three years, you have these uh, killings by police officers that the community uh, stood up against, you know. But and then it also been a movement against violence. Uh, the, I think the injustice movement and the violence movement is being attacked with the same force in the last three years. It's no different. And and also I see that it's people that are fed up, but they they're tired because they have nowhere to rest. They can't rest. They can't pay their bills. We energy is is taking all their money. Uh, they can't uh, function correctly. So I don't think it's a lot of comfortable people on the north side. I think that they're they're frustrated. I think that they are trying to find solutions right now. And more than ever, I think it's time to organize our people. But going back to the football strategy, uh, right now, Milwaukee is one of the worst place statistically for African-Americans to live, men and children. It's the worst place economically in another uh, topic in business. Uh, so how, how, with all these things against us, it's time to get new coaches in here. It's time to get new leadership in here. It's time to if you have a football team and y'all losing and, and, and you don't replace the coach, you don't replace the ideology, you will continue to lose. And I think Milwaukee needs to replace uh, its leadership. I think that we need new, fresh ideas. I think we need people to, you know, hey, it's nothing to say uh, bad about anybody who's been around here trying to do anything. It's just that we need to start opting for new leadership because we need people to, to, to reinstate when a new football coach comes. Uh, a good football coach would take a team to the Super Bowl or, or challenge the Super Bowl in about three to four years. So right now we're looking at we need a new we need new leadership to stand up and say, this is the new direction. This is how we're going to do this. And right now we don't have that. OK, well, we're going to hear from our standing leadership. <laughs> <laughs> that just joined us. And I love Queen. Martha I mean, I Love. love has joined us in the studio. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to let Martha respond because this is something that actually Martha and I have been working on for a decade. A few years. A few years. <laughs> this intergenerational. You know, we talk uh, about decades. Come on. <laughs> this intergenerational uh, between uh, leadership, the elders and the emerging leaders and uh, organization and leadership. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're happy to have Martha here with us on uh, Christmas. And we've got some more to share. You're listening to Universally Speaking with Raheem Islam on 860 AM WNLV, The Voice. Welcome back to Universally Speaking with Raheem Islam. I am your co-host today, Tosha Davis. We are in the studio. Yes, you are not confused. It is Thursday. Today is Thursday, December 25th, Christmas. This is a special edition of Universally Speaking. We are joined in the studio with some special guests today. We have Tori Lowe, who's in the studio with us. He also has his son with him today. Uh, you want to say hello? Hey, how Maurice. You doing? Maurice Lowe. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, that's Maurice. <laughs> and we also have with us our special guest today, Miss Martha Love is joining us today. Martha, you've been busy today. I have had a very busy day. I want to say, first off, um, happy holidays to our community. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and Kwanzaa starts... Tomorrow. 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 Right. We can't forget Kwanzaa. So it's been... Everyone should be at the Black Historical Society. Black Historical Society. For opening Society. ceremony. Is that, uh, is that what Ruben's been passing yes, out? Yes, that's what's been going out um, Ruben via Hopkins. email. And the opening ceremony is tomorrow at the Black Historical Society on okay. 27th and Center. I know the Women's Center is also having yes, something. The, maybe every, that, there, There's a couple different events, but oh. I think the opening ceremony is at the Black Historical Society that's tomorrow. That's great. It's been a glorious day. I... For the last 24 years, spent a day at a community festival, feast, Christmas family feast. Something that we thought we had lost, but we were able to come together as a community yes. and keep it here in the community. Keep it here in the community, and we were able to meet and greet again about 8,000 guests. Wow. And their families, and we were able to provide through the Salvation Army and Wee's Energy and just so the Potawatomi... Uh, universal companies. Universal companies. <laughs> Potawatomi, <laughs> Forest nope. County Potawatomi <laughs> Foundation. Yes. And others. And I'm <laughs> many others. sorry. Many, many others. I'm really sorry. I, can't, I don't just don't have the list. And Martha Love Association B. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so what, what, did, what happened? What, tell me what happened. Well, what happened was... Because I was supposed to be there and so Okay, much, yes, you were. We did, we did announce you. Something happened. And I, I understand, I, and I, I, we ain't going to talk about that. Right. I, 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 got really, that I really feel bad about that, but go ahead. Yeah, we, I, I got the message. And so what we did was for the past two weeks, we have, as a group, been preparing to prepare Christmas dinner for 8,000 people. Oh, that's fun. And that's through sponsorship of a number of different companies and the ones that I previously just um, right. announced, including, again, universal companies in our community. And so we had over 1,400 volunteers. For the People who give up their Christmas and Give come up their Christmas and, and come. It makes no difference what their religious affiliation is. They come with their children. Their families. Families, and they help to prepare the facilities at the Wisconsin Center, chop the celery and green peppers and onions for the dressing. <laughs> we have two professional cooks that volunteer their time, Gus Kelly and Bob. Oh, I love Gus. And they have been with us for a number of years, uh, helping to direct the volunteer kitchen crew that comes in, does all the cleaning, and like I said, help to prepare the, f uh, prepare the food. We had beautiful entertainment today. Homer Blow was one of the folks, and um, it, it was just beautiful entertainment. Just real, what would you say, Tony, real jazzy kinds of, the kind of Christmas music that you would uh, really like to hear. So we volunteered. We serviced everybody. Who was that Bucks person that was there? I'm sorry. I Parker? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop Jabbar Parker. That's who it was. He's one of our sponsors as well. So anyway, we we uh, had a we opened the doors at 11:30, and it's always very tearful for me to see my friends and families come back for 24 years. Mm. Their grandkids, great grand grandkids, who've been coming for great entertainment. You must have been like Santa two, Claus. three years old when you started doing this. Uh, no, it's about a year. <laughs> 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 but anyway, it was great. God bless you. It was God, great. God bless and, you. Um, Troy was talking about leadership, and um, I, I agree with Troy. We do need active, active people that are going to plan, people that are going right. to research, because sometimes the missing component of leadership in any area is the research that's done, so you don't run into those crazy roadblocks. For an right. example... Protesting on city property, the fine may be $25. Protesting on a county property is $600. That's a big difference. It's a big difference. Just a little bit of research, but I respect... Wait a minute, that's the penalty? Penalty, yes. Oh. So I respect most certainly uh, what the protesters have done and will do in the future. I was privileged to attend one of their planning meetings, and I just felt really, really great because that's been kind of my career uh, as an organizer so 
Troy does a great job. All of the people out here are just continuing to fight for the voiceless and those that are too lethargic to right. kind of get up and come out and help them. So, you know, one of the things before we go back to the kind of organizing piece, I just want to just kind of uh, one of the things I think I like most about this time of year. And um, I had a discussion with uh, a group the other day and talking about um, we had a we had a in Philly we did a thing called the 10,000 men call to action and uh, we were able to get 10,000 men to come to a um, uh, the Leah Chorus Center like a arena type of facility and it was a lot of morale and, and, and but we didn't have the infrastructure to keep them mm-hmm. but the purpose and the function of the uh, call the action of 10,000 men was to increase the level of volunteerism in our community by us and so when I hear what you just described this morning I, didn't, I don't want I don't want to, that to go lightly um, that's really the spirit that we have to capture that spirit right there we can capture that spirit um, um, we have an opportunity and and that means those who have you know it's it's one thing um, you know you know to have something but the best thing is to give and so when you see in this moment of time even though it's been commercialized there's still a spirit that exists in this period of time of giving and if we can capture that spirit that's the that's the thing that's going to free us um, and though that means really going after those who have something to give you know, um, and so I just wanted to con- congratulate you. And I know all the things, not all the things, but a lot of things you do that you do not only today, but all the time. Thinking <laughs> about how do you organize and pull together resources to help people who can. And that last piece, the, the, the too lethargic, that's a new one. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to add that to my repertoire. Well, sometimes <laughs> but that, but people those, have a, you know, they, right. they, get, they, got, they got itis. And, right, right. And, you know, so they can't kind of get themselves together. But, you know, I want to respond to um, the spirit because uh, there's a young woman, her name is Tia Richardson, who's a local artist. Mm-hmm. And I wanted her to come today to see all of everything to see the um, whole operation of the Christmas family feast. The one thing she said, and Rahim just said it, the newspapers in our community never capture the spirit of the event. Of, of the event. Right. And she said if, if the newspapers would capture the, ex- the spirit of it, the place would be bulging with people. I mean, 8,000 people is a lot of people, right. but there would be far more, and people would have a much better understanding of a community Christmas family feast. I just want to respond to that because she just said it a little while ago. Well, I think, and I, I, I don't want to lose our topic, which is basically, you know, um, how do we, you know, I, I say, how do we transfer anger into action? You know how do how do we translate that? Because as you talked about how disgruntled our people are, uh, and it's it's been historical fact. But the question for us has to be: we have to be able to translate that. We have to get this. Uh, and you you talked about Toshi. Maybe you want to uh, um, kind of talk about what are the ideas or thoughts you have in a generational. Uh, conversations that yeah, we must have to, as, a, as a community. Right. This is something, and, you know, it was very interesting that, Mr. Lowe, that you brought this up, you know, about leadership and uh, Martha and I, I coined a phrase y- many years ago. We talked about uh, pastorbaton.com mm-hmm. and something that you've heard me talk about, Raheem, where I tell people that, you know, it has gotten to the point where not only was the baton never passed, but the leadership held on to the baton and then they started using the baton as a cane and then they were buried with the baton holding it in their hands because we couldn't pry it from them so when you talk about having to compete with people who still are should have been your mentors or your elders because they didn't pass the baton we really need to dig a little bit deeper and examine why is that what is that about and and when you're young and you're trying to help, and you see your elders 
and you respect them you'd be like wow that's that's my elder i i, I remember when you when i was little you was coming to the school saying you know grow up help fight then you get grown and then they tell you to sit down right. so then you, you then you like, wait a minute wait a minute this something ain't right here right you know and martha has been one of the people that i have to say definitely in our community who has embraced many of us uh, you know she can tell you better than i can but i know that i was one of the people when i first came into the line of work that, that i do that embraced me and took me under her wings and you know we have a weekly or a monthly talk where we get together and kind of go through everything and she's a mentor to many people in our community but everyone doesn't do that but as Raheem talked about earlier, you can't fix something until you know what it is that you're dealing with. So we really need to unpack what the problem is. And for years, we complained about it, but there's something behind that. Yeah, I, I think that and that's why you know, people look at me as some kind of uh, agitator or something or some, you know, I'm harping on some things that, um, are, you know, oh, we did, did, been there, done that. Uh, just the opposite you know i'm trying to you know you know for lack of better words you know wake people up this is really more serious than we think it is and it is yes it is tied to our past in this country i'm not using it as no crutch i'm using it as a way to use it for a solution you know how do we begin to address because you know when doctor calls you into the office and he said you got you got this you got that you got that he's going to try to search and find out what's really causing the discomfort that you're having what is it really if he if he just treats you for the symptom he ain't a good doctor and you need to get away from that joke exactly but if he actually want to ask you questions how long did you have this pain how often does the pain come? Does it come here? Does it come here? What does happen? Let me go examine this. Let me get your blood work done. Let me let me get your x-ray here. Let me I need to get more information and data to find out what's wrong with you. And if you are, are honest with yourself, you have to say something is wrong with us. Something's wrong. You you see it, I see it, we all see it, but we can't do nothing about it. Not at the level that we need to really change, you know, the narrative. To Not at the level that we're going to move the needle. Because these conditions we're talking about, I just looked at a documentary earlier today. The same conditions. The exact same conditions. This is nothing new. But the difference is we don't have a public opinion. There's no voice. We don't have that great black leader. So we have to change the paradigm. But so I spent a lot of my time focusing on some of the things to draw us to, to a conclusion that we must investigate our past in order for us to understand our future. And so I'm not suggesting that we uh, stop moving forward. Not in any way. I'm saying we got to do it at the same time. time. We got to go and figure out how do we start to now have appreciation for our ancestors but at the same time how do we start to navigate a path for us today i think we'll be more informed better informed we'll be more armed and one of the things i think that we'll also be we more proud we'd be proud to be black people i'm proud of martha i'm proud of tosha i'm, I'm proud of uh, mr jones i'm proud of the black people who fought in this city I'm proud of the black people who fought in this country. I'm proud of them. They make me feel great. And so, yeah, you come to learn that all that glitter ain't gold. We human. We got issues. I ain't seen, I ain't seen one human that don't have issues. But we got to be able to figure out how do we work with each other. And we don't discard. Uh, uh, I say the least of us we should be able to extract from them and put this into this equation called this movement. I, I will say this. I, I, I don't join. I'm not a part of any church. I'm not a part of any political party. I'm not a part of any any group. I'm independent. I believe that everybody has their uh, 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 should be given their own ability to deal with the community from their standpoint. As long as it's helping overall, it don't matter. I, I try to support anybody that's helping the community. I'm, I see all aspects of my community in one day. 
every aspect economic uh school uh, uh you name it i i see it in one day i see four or five or six aspects of our community because i deal in all of the aspects I see, I hear the ideas, and, and like I said, I support them. Why? Because I believe that that person may have a significant amount of information in that area. So we, it's, it's for us to try to support those who are trying to uh, do whatever they, they feel that is in their heart to do it. That's, that's what I believe in. But what I see is if I'm not a part of your clique, you, you can't come over here and, and, and deal with us. If you're not believing in my uh, political beliefs, I don't want you over here. Uh -huh. If you're not a uh, part of the way I'm doing it, Right. then you can't come right. and and uh like i said uh, i i don't get invited to none of these things because i'm not in your group and i don't care about being in your group uh i'll let my, my my action on the streets do the talking amongst the people i don't and when i see big conferences and they talking about issues in the community and i look up and i see some of those people that is not even taking a direct approach to the people speaking that's what's wrong with milwaukee if you're going to at least say something at least be deeply involved in the matter because really I don't care what you're doing. If you're not, if I don't see action, I'm, I'm not going to listen to your plan. You can have the best plan in the world, but I'm not going to listen to you. Why? Because I'm not familiar with you. There's nothing there to say. Why should I listen to you? And that's why we have to form brotherhoods and sisterhoods. Right. We have to we have to form those brotherhoods and, and sisterhoods. So so when you do tell me something, I see you as a brother. Like that's my brother, so he telling me right. But if I if you come out the blue and say, okay, this is what you need to be doing, I'm gonna look at you and like, who who are you? I don't trust you when it's no it's no format there that we have to connect with our people. And that's why we have to start installing brotherhoods and sisterhoods. Well, and I say I think here and I, I would I'm, I'm, I'm in 100 percent agreement. And I just think the question has got to be how um, for us. And I don't say I have the answer, but I do. I do know that part of the answer lies in us creating that table where we all can sit and all meaning a good portion of us it don't have to be a hundred percent of us it only have to be a 50 percent of us mm -hmm. but a, it has to be a table where at least you're invited whether you come or not mm -hmm. you're invited uh i think it's only a matter of time before you come and you sit at the table but i think part of what we have to do and in milwaukee and chicago and everywhere black people are the majority minority we really have to are suffering the same issues we have to create that table where it's intergenerational. Intergenerational. It's uh, um, you know, both young, um, immersion leaders, it's both our elders, it's also male, female, it's uh, all aspects of our community. It's, it's uh, religious, it's uh, non-religious. The bottom line is that if you have something to give, there should be a place that you can give it um, for a group. And, and it's not proprietary, as you're saying. I, I only want you to do this because, I mean, really, I want you to be a part of what, what, I'm, what I'm doing. No, 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 no. It has to be a fu fundamentally got to be a part of what is the agenda um, for our community. Um, I just read um, uh, something earlier today that we're writing, and um, I definitely um, going to be sharing it with Milwaukee. Uh, because it's a message to the governor, the uh, incumbent, or excuse me, the uh, governor-elect uh, for Pennsylvania, and it's a nine-page document that we've we we solicited input from probably 25, 30 people in different areas, uh, whether it was a uh, uh, public safety, uh, whether it was uh, health and uh, wellness, whether it was in economics, uh, whether it's education. Um, and also social services. And we gave them a blueprint to what your point was that it was researched. It was experts bringing content around the systems and about what a governor could do within his purview to do if he did what it would mean to our community. So, so you created an agenda. A, an agenda, yes. Um, and so we're prepared right now to deliver that to the governor elect. His inauguration, I think, is the 21st. We're having a meeting with him prior to his inauguration um, to put the making sure that he has the right people within his administration. I think it become a blueprint for two things: a blueprint for a governor, but most importantly, it becomes a blueprint for a mayor and how we begin to do that process. So, um, hopefully, um, your spirit um, uh, will stay connected, and your spirit is much needed, uh, much needed. Um, our people need it. 
And I also, our people need uh, for us to put down our egos. Our people need us to put down our ideologies, our philosophies, and think about one thing. Again, I remember I talked earlier that I'm going to conclude with black culture is about being black and thinking black. That does not mean that you're anti anything, but it definitely means that you're pro black. Mm -hmm. And if you're pro black, you're going to listen. You're going to you're going to have a you're going to have some sense of well, let me hear what you got to say because you might be the solution. It's a common thread. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be coming with you, coming with you. I and 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 no one can say nobody. No one can say that they have the answer. There's not. There's no answer that's going to fix this, except that we work together. Mm -hmm. So a couple things, Raheem. I want. There's something I want to share from the beginning of the series that you kind of touched on a little bit when you guys were talking. But I want to ask you a question. You just mentioned. You said we. You said we've got a meeting with the governor. You said we've outlined mm -hmm. these different areas and we've done the research. Who is we? Well, the we um, in that situation is um, uh, a group of leaders in Philadelphia under this concept we call the Philadelphia Community of Leaders. And it really represents um, um, people who have um, experience in these different areas. Okay. Um, and they have come together and... Um, kept their uh, autonomy. Oh, oh, no question, kept their autonomy, but now have joined... Uh, uh, and I write a concept called the um, the uh, about the whole and the the sum of its parts. There's a, a ton of you go on the internet and it talks about the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. And the sum of its parts, if it's a well, the v the vehicle has you know the carburetor, the exhaust system, the the tires, the axle. It has so many parts that make it a functioning vehicle. But it, when it's working together, it works. That vehicle is great. But it's not a car unless it has a Well, and so we need, we have to look at, and that's black culture. It's always been black culture. But that's black culture is when we look at ourselves in, in a whole and not individual parts. And so the we in that situation, and the we in Milwaukee, the we in, is anybody who believes the same way. Who believes that it's bigger than them. That the issue is bigger than them. This is not about no ego. This is not about stroking nobody. This is really about getting into a situation. A sober conversation with you brother. Amongst others with you Martha. And others who, who got some, some capacity. Some knowledge. And it was on the ground. Because I guarantee you. What the things you've said. I've been enlightened. Enlightened by what you've said. I am not taking this for granted. I'm saying, well, now I've got to figure out how do I turn myself on and how I got to get this brother into my, my conversation because you can interpret some things that I can't interpret, but I want to win. Exactly. So the we is anybody who thinks that as black people that it's bigger than us and that it is our responsibility to come together. And so we've done it um, in a limited way, but a lot of this is smoke and mirrors because our people are really don't understand the damage been done to us. They really don't. So we talked a little bit earlier about even with the movement, the civil rights movement, how it looked like it was more than what it really was. It, it, you know, we, we, we thought it was millions but maybe in reality it was only what hundreds or thousands and that's what Raheem I'm assuming that's what he's referring to is that you know a lot of it is smoke and mirrors that but, but somebody has to be the leaders to step out to start doing it to take the charge but a lot of this goes back to this whole thing that we've been talking about with our community and our black men I mean you, you really touched on it now, is it Tory or is it Troy? It's, if you really know me, you call me Troy. My grandma called me Troy. So okay. She, if you so she called call, you Troy. She called me Troy. Okay, so which so one I'm me call calling you Troy. I really know you. I really know you. I'm calling you Troy. Tory Lowe, you feel me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, we no, call but I, I'm calling him Troy. We call you Troy. He said if you really yeah. know him, yeah. you call him Troy. We call you Troy. So I'm going to say Troy. Only grandma called me Troy and my family called My family never called me Tory. Okay. 
Yeah. But the, but people who 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 just Facebook meet media just, just you know, meet you. Right. We call yeah. you Troy now because you you know you you in the house with us though. But uh, this is the thing, and I, and I, and I hate, and once again, I may say something that 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 you know, what I don't see in in these major issues is the streets, what we call the streets. I don't see them. Even in these, uh, 62 black men got molested in Milwaukee. We sitting in the court. The police got their side filled up. And it's only me and Monique Taylor sitting on the other side, you know, uh, uh, sitting there watching this go down. And, it, and all these boys that got molested and the community is not there in the uprising. You know what I mean? It's like these, these, these officers illegally strip searched these men. And, and, and we had we it's like, OK, so then every incident that has to deal with our issues. That, but if I go to 618, you know, because I do uh, help the club community when they try to come against them to, to shut the clubs down, the urban community, they employ people, too. That it's not a, just a party or entertainment place. It's an employment place. So you have to save those economics, too. But that's a different story. But when I go there and, and I deal with those clubs, it's, it's 400, 500 uh, black people there. That are partying, or, or, or you know, from to the, keep the club, to open. keep the you know, I'm talking about people that are just partying. I mean, they gather for these things, but when it comes to community issues, we have less participation. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a black party coming up, and it's going to be what three thousand, uh, you know, estimated couple thousand black people partying. But then you got uh, Duntre Hamilton, the issue with Duntre Hamilton. And I'm going to say something that, you know, is this real serious. It's the truth. I, I, uh, what you see on TV is a combination of uh, liberals, uh, socialists, anarchists, communists, uh, 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 progressives. It's no hood in this. <laughs> That's not hood. It's not it's not the people I see at 618 at these uh, protests and rallies. It's not the hip hop community that that swear that, you know, they got it. They, they, so they, it's not us. It, I'm just saying it's not the hood. It's well, not street. But, but I think, uh, Troy, what you're pointing out, I mean, forget about how you use it. Mm -hmm. Because we got so many issues, whether mm -hmm. it's the uh, molestation of our men, whether it's the incarceration of our men, whether it's the lack of jobs, whatever. Pick an issue. The real issue you're pointing to is the lack of a voice. Yeah, it's, it's not street. It's right, not, uh, right. In Ferguson, that's street. Right. Uh, they didn't know what to do. But they started burning stuff down. Like, hey, they knew they could light something up. Right. You know what I mean? They didn't know. These, them young people didn't know exactly what to do, but they did something. Right. And you, I, I've been to Ferguson. I've, I've been in those protests. I, I, I hang out with some of these. Uh, me and uh, Mike Brown, lawyer, we talk. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is I'm, I'm saying that we're not seeing a street component, uh, a hood component. Well, I, 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 I don't even, well, you know. What I we think, call street and right, hood. yeah. I think what you you talking about really the people, right? The 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 the, the, the real issues of the people. But I go back to what you said, Martha, about the um, you know either struggling or lethargic. You know, people. We have to get out of our comfort zone, and so there has to be a way to do that. Again, none of these things are going to change themselves. I mean, what you're describing is some serious, serious stuff. It's going to take a serious, serious approach. Um, and I, again, you can't, everybody's not ready for that kind of discussion. I'm just saying. And so, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm ready for it. I'm ready. I think the people here are ready for it. Mm -hmm. I think there's some people out there that are listening are ready for it. But that's what we have to, as a magnet, we've got to bring those people out. But we've got to have that table. And so, God willing, over the next, I would say the next, 90 days or so we gotta we're gonna we're gonna help facilitate that table for that discussion i would love for you troy and those who are out there on the on the on the in the, in the, in the uh, front lines um to have a seat at that table um uh, knowing that we got to work together right. knowing that we need each other i mean there ain't no one way it's going to cure this thing we got to have the public opinion address we got to get legislators who think like we do that's why i think martha we talking about the political process is essential so even the young people today they say well we don't know it's essential but they don't see the significance because we haven't tied the you know connected the dots for them and they don't see no evidence of it that it's going to turn us around you could do that you and others could do that if we create this table that we can all sit together 
and be consistent. The only thing I say about this table, you just can't, you got to commit to it. You can't, divorce is not an option. You can't leave it. You know what I mean? And sometimes what I see from the older people is that you, the young people don't know how to handle the older people. And when I say you have to have patience, you know, let me tell you, something. I got five or six guys that are older than me and they follow my leadership. But guess what? I'm following them. But guess what? When I have to sit down, they whip the stew out of me. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know what happened. I'm like, I'm bleeding all over the place. But the bottom line, I have to have the patience and the humility to stand with them. I can't go in there gangster with them. And you got to do the same thing. You're going to have to do it. Your generation is going to have to do it. You're going to have to take a page of humility and listen and, and, and do your thing. I'm not suggesting that you don't do your thing, but you, we got to create that kind of ability to give our elders an ability to give us some guidance and then to unload and dump what they're going to dump. And then we move out. And and I believe in that. I always look for elders in my community. And I like like I said, Martha Love has been a great elder to me. She have never did nothing to me. She, <laughs> Martha, like you know what? Well, no, but I'm just being. I'm just elder. No, but what I'm just being. It's a beautiful. Just being. We have to get another No, it's a beautiful term. Are you kidding me? But what I'm saying is, I, I take pride in that. So when I say it, please, I say it as a respect because I don't call everybody my elder. You cannot be my elder if you ain't acting. Well, just let me be an elder right now. Right, right. For half. Well, you know, there's a queen. I call a queen. There's a difference between an elder and all. I call her my queen. Yeah. my queen. I usually call her queen. You right. Know? That's right but but, but I'm trying to be politically correct or something. But but what I'm saying is, when I see her, I don't care what nobody has an opinion. From my experience, she's always greeted me with respect. Always. They never have said, uh, Tori, you know, this and that. She have always encouraged uh, me to do uh, what I'm doing and actually called me and, and gave me other people to help. You know what I mean? So she that not only showed she was a, a, a good leader, she was actually steering people my direction. She put skin in the game. Yeah, so right. so so that so that's what I'm saying. And for me too. She, Let me tell you something. When I when I I'm coming here and I don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. There's been a, a several people who have embraced me and given me legitimacy and, and encouraged me. And Martha is one of my biggest ones. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't have to happen, mm -hmm. but that's our spirit. Yes. And I think that's the spirit of most of our elders. I think, though, you have to be able to handle the two sides of the coin. One side, the instruction, the other side of the whipping. And the whipping is just as much as much as part of the, the, the learning process because it is just it's just something fundamental that they have. And they've seen that we have not. And you got to be able to get that information. And so, mm -hmm. you know, where are you going? You, you're moving too slow. You move, where, where, are you taking, where are you taking me? But you know what? I found out in the end, if I just practice some patience, it was beneficial to me. I've learned it the hard way. And I'm only teaching, I'm only showing you what I had to go through with a Kenny Gamble. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, uh, a Dr. Walter Lomax, a uh, Willie Johnson in Philadelphia. These guys are great. A uh, Bill Wilson. These guys are monumental. A Phil, a Phil, a Phil, a George, trust me. <laughs> but I listen. Now, you don't think I listen because I talk a lot. But let me tell you something. I listen. All right? I got my opinion. I'm never going to be without an opinion. But I am kind of trying to extract from them everything that I could possibly get out of their brains and so that I can I can put things in context because it's not just about information it's information wisdom is when you take information you put it in context then you have a good idea because there ain't nothing new under the sun I can apply this and I, that's why the first thing when you said about the Martin Luther, uh, the uh, Malcolm X I said send it to me because I want to hear it all right, and so I think that a uh, young people, and I don't, and I'm putting a, a uh, some blanket statement all on young people, because I'm working on a whole bunch of young people, and I fundamentally, but I think something we have to figure out on a purpose is where we have to d remove this divide, and we have to create a generational game plan, because that if we can create the protocols now of how I 
who I'm 57. And then in 10 years, God willing, I'm 67. How I'm 67 deal with the people who are 45. How the people who are 45 who will be 55, which you 38. You'll be 40. You'll be 50 soon. All right? So they be calling you out. That I'm, you, I'm, I'm gonna take a vacation. I'm, well, let me just. I, I, I'm smart enough I, to know I, that. I, no, no, I, I don't want to lose my point. I, I'm going to Florida. No, no, I don't mean to put. It's, I'm telling you, that thing happens faster than you can think. Right. The point I'm making is that though, the question would be how are those coming behind you going to be dealing with each other. We have to change that, right? We have to change that paradigm purposely, and it ain't going to happen because we wish it to happen. It's going to happen because we fix it now, mm-hmm. and the young people. The ills you're describing, at least they won't have to deal with those kind of ills. Mm -hmm. How leadership expresses emerging leaders. In fact, how we cultivate leadership. You know, um, I've seen young people right now, they like, are you kidding me? I would love to sit down and and, and work with a Martha Love. Are you kidding? I I didn't think, you know, well, guess what? We're going to be doing like uh, day-to-day action. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working with each other. They, matters, look, they're going to wish matter, they could keep up with Martha Love on, during the day. On, on, matters, <laughs> on matters that are important to them, important to us, and important to our community. Well, you know, uh, back to the, um, the protesters and what the, perception, what the perception is, is that a lot of people are not coming to the marches. But the protesters, uh, Nate Hamilton, his family, and all of the others that are part of that great organizing effort, just the other day, you seen a policy move by some of our great elected officials. This is by the common co- the right. black the, the black the common the council members, black and Hispanic, and allies of the black community, of the city alder persons. They came through with a significant policy move. They have the power to do it. We are so accustomed to push back through policy that in fact we did not recognize what a masterful move it was by our city all the persons can you share a little bit of that martha well the move, the move was when they did the press conference the other day convened the press conference the other day and they talked about their ability to identify various areas in this city that's having a negative impact on black men and others. So they put together like a six or seven point plan of what they want to institute that the police should follow as it relates to dealing with the public. Mm. They can do it. Right. Others can stand by and talk. But they have the ability to institute policy. Right. And this is an opportunity for the mayor or the everyone in that area to but they step had, up. they almost had a majority of all the persons at the press conference right that all that. agreed the president of the common council Mike Murphy yes all of them were were there yes but policy is what really um, caused us to have a lot of heartburn because we get to one point matter of fact the decision was a heartburn. But in, in spite of that ugly decision, we had our older people over here it's working, working to determine policy. Right. As soon as There's the decision not a, came down, they right. went to work. They went to work. They had the press conference. There's a lot of people here in this city that I've spoken to that tell me personal stories all the time about how in their workplace they're having people to understand what the protest is about. So we clearly understand and in our own individual way, we are supporting the protesters. And I believe that in Nate's ability, Nate Hamilton's ability. And this is Dante Hamilton's brother. Dante yeah. Hamilton's brother. Nate Hamilton represents our community at this time. So I would caution anyone to really talk about something they don't know what they're talking about. They should defer to the family and let the family make any statements they want to make. Mm-hmm. Talk to us privately about what they need to have facilitated. Okay, well, I um, was following, and I do a little bit of social media, a little bit of stuff on Facebook and things like that. No, I've seen it. (laughs) (laughs) 
said, okay, let me go into the meeting. Um, so <laughs> I did a little, I'm going to, I really want to share, I have to get to Raheem's, we, we're, we're, we're getting close on time and I really have to get to this. Mark, have you been following this targeted black male series that Raheem has been writing, uh, over the last month, uh, almost two I really want to share some of that, and I really want to encourage our listeners. Troy, if you have not read this, you really need to go online to just Google Milwaukee Courier Rahim Islam um, for this particular series because it really gets to the root of a lot of the things that you were talking about. And when we started talking about civil rights and the movement, and we were also talking about, you know, what has happened in our community and what hasn't happened um, with the protests. And it's taken me a minute to pull this up. Um, Martha's laughing because I did actually make a statement and someone asked, told me that I was beginning to sound like um, someone that I hang around with a lot. Raheem. Raheem. <laughs> so I actually made a statement about the protesters. And basically what I said was that I'm from what's known as Generation X, and you're from what's known as the Millenniums or the Millennials. Uh, and I'm going to say I'm talking to Troy. And the statement that I made was that I don't think that as Generation X, is, these are people that were born in the last part of the Civil Rights Movement. So 1965 on up. So 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. That, genera- that, that generation, generation X? That's Generation X. So I don't think that this generation, which would be my generation, I don't think we're in any position. Where, where's the millennials? What, what, the millennials what? is anything 60, anything that goes back 64, I mean, later. They're the generation after mine. So mine is 65 to 80. Uh, so any, anything after 80? Any, anything after 80. So um, w- the statement that I made was that I didn't think that my generation, or it might be 65 to 78, that might be closer to what well, it is. That's, that's okay, cool. anyway. That's cool. So what I, the statement that I made was that I didn't think that my generation was in any position to be judgmental or to say anything about the millennials or the millenniums protesting because it was my generation that fell asleep at the wheel. We were the last generation that was actually born during the civil rights movement. There were those of us that were born in the 60s. The millenniums and the millennials are actually only doing what they read about, what they've seen film about, and what they've heard about. So they are putting into practice what someone told them has worked. My generation is the generation that fell asleep at the wheel. And we are not in any position to judge them or to criticize them because if we think that things should have been done differently, it was our position to have shown this generation a different way to do that. But we got comfortable with the fruits of the labors of the generation before us. We were able to go to schools, we assimilated, we integrated, and life for us was comfortable. So we stopped fighting. We thought that we had arrived and that there was no more work to be done. So we let things lapse. We fell asleep at the wheel. And when we fell asleep at the wheel, this is what we're left with. So if this generation has chose to look back into history and use this method to create change, we're not the ones. We need to assist them in any way that we can, whether it be monetarily, support them, organize, help them organize, whatever it is that we can do to assist them. But also they learn from lessons the the lessons of the past um and so that means there has to be a significant amount of history on um you know the width breadth the length of the movement you know how was it organized you know they didn't have facebook they didn't have the internet um there was a um uh, i was looking at the um the um I think it was the uh, Brown versus Board of Education. Um, I met the uh, lawyer, Dr. B- uh, Judge B- uh, Burnett, 
who was one, that that case Brown versus Board of Vacation was really a consolidation of five cases that they tried or they compiled to be Brown versus the Board of Education in the Sp- United States Supreme Court. One of those cases, I met the uh, uh, plaintiff uh, on that case. Now he's in his 80s, uh, but I met him the other day, and I was so excited to meet this man um, because he gave me the origins. He gave me information. So it's very important for us to, um, the millennials, you know, and um, to understand, you know, um, learn lessons from the past. Because I think in, 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 in addition to what you're saying as far as, you know, the benefits that were gained as it relates to the civil rights movement and you were the direct beneficiaries, there still was a whole lot of people that did not benefit. Exactly. A whole lot of people. And it also points to a glaring problem with the parents they had they had in many cases assimilated themselves mm-hmm. so uh just because you fight for integration don't mean you leave your community right just because you fight for civil rights and equal rights don't mean that now you try to be with you know you you automatically get on that side and then throw darts on the other side it doesn't mean that something was fundamentally wrong, even in our thinking. So that's what I think the the uh, millennials have to understand. There was something wrong even then. It only manifests itself sixty years later. I, I call it um, when I get to Milwaukee. I call it the A.O. Smith generation, where they was all they had everything. They had Cadillacs, everything, Bridge of Stratton. Uh, the, they, they didn't leave us nothing. Yeah, I think it was um, uh, another concept called full employment. Right, right. I, I, they didn't leave us. <laughs> they didn't leave us anything. Uh, my generation has to scrap, you know, fight harder because there's not much there for us. So, like I said, there's no problem with dealing with these elders, but some of these elders, they, they didn't leave us much. Uh, like she said, her the generation before them fought hard. But then it was a break there, two, two, three generations there, and now we're just we're just trying to move forward. So it's it's a big disconnect between uh, the generations right now. I think that I, I just wrote something down, and somebody told me this, but I was trying to remember exactly how they told me. But they were talking about um, politicians, and so it was good to hear what you just said uh, uh, the other day. And and it says uh, politicians, and this is pretty much pretty much a fact. Politicians will do the easy wrong thing. Remind you, politicians will do the easy wrong thing in a minute. Very rarely will they do the hard right thing. All right? But that's really going to transfer into life. All of us, everywhere, everywhere you go. It's easy to do the wrong thing. If it's easy. Right, it's easy. It's easy. It's easy thing to do. It's wrong to do it. It's easy. Well, it's easy. That's why. You know, that's why I say uh, uh, they talk about uh, 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 intentions and and um, oh, good intentions. Good intentions and, and and and. But the bottom line is that there's so many people that died or in hell because of good <laughs> intentions. intentions. But the reality is that it's hard to do the the right thing, and the right thing, brother Troy. The right thing for us is to you to take that energy and you to organize that energy and organize our people. You do it with your group. I'll do it with my group. You get a couple b- before you. Let them organize. We pull all of our groups together. And we come with, with one thing in, 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 in mind, that we're in trouble. We're in crises. And that's the hardest thing for us to do right now. It'd be easy for us to sit there and throw darts at each other and fight each other. But the hard thing for us to do, which is the right thing for us to do, is to come together. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. Martha, you do your thing. Tosha, you do your thing. And we bring them all together. Mm-hmm. The body. And, and the I, 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 I says, and, and we, we put them together. And it don't have to be all. But it'd be enough diversity that we hear different sides of the story we can hear the struggle of the mother it's not just the struggle of the father 
We can hear. I'm going to talk about the struggle of the father because that's one I know. I got to hear the mother talk to hear about the struggle of the mother. I can hear about the struggle of the generations you're describing and and how we've lost credibility with that group of people. I like to hear it. Well, well, this is this is what it, what I see. It's a it's a fight for justice. It's a fight for violence. It's a fight for economics. It's a fight for education, and it's a fight for jobs. And 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 you have to be involved in all three to be a voice of our people. You have to be in the fight equally in all three areas, all four areas: jobs, education, uh, injustice, and just community. And if you're not leading or or, or competing in those three areas, you have no say. Well, we got something we're going to invite you to that deals with those three topics. And Milwaukee, guess what? We will be back tomorrow, same time, same station, for Friday, Universally Speaking, with Raheem Islam on 860 AM tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here. Any parting words, Raheem? I guess people will do the easy wrong thing, but very rarely will do the hard right thing. You gotta change that dynamic. Until tomorrow, Milwaukee. Peace.